I want to talk about frequency and wavelengths today, and this is kind of part eight of the foundation exam, but it'd be interesting uh, for anybody who's just interested in wavelength and that sort of thing. Now, I'm on page six of this book here. It, it talks briefly, we'll get on to alternating current voltages and frequency in a minute, but page um, six talks about series and parallel circuits. An easy way to remember that is that if you've got a battery here and a couple of resistors or bulbs, the electricity will be going in series, like watching a next Netflix series. It's one after the other, and parallel is both together. Read that bit. There's a bit of Ohm's law, as is the next section as well, which is to do with L um, LEDs, light-emitting diodes. And there's a bit of Ohm's law in there, and it's also reminding us that a light-emitting diode is polarity-sensitive. In other words, positive to positive and negative to negative, not the other way around. Right, with that said, let's move on to alternating current. Now, most of the time, electricity is delivered to us in the UK at 50 hertz, in the USA and other countries, it's 60 hertz. What does that mean and what the hell are we on about? Well, at the power station, there's these enormous great sort of house size generators and they've got one, two, three, four, five, six. They've generally got six poles, different colors. All right, <laughs> I'll call them different colors. And this huge, great stator, stator here moves around, a massive kind of magnet thing, spins round and round at 50 times a second in the UK and 60 times a second in the USA. And I've got a little graphic on the screen here. I found this at the Engineering Stack Exchange. It's it's a graphic, if you like, of a big generator and a big magnet moving around and showing how the three phases of electricity are delivered. Now, if you live in a little housing estate, what will happen is, and it's generally literally red, green and blue, your house will be on the blue phase, next door's house might be on the red phase, and the next door's house might be on the green phase. So you're just getting one cycle of this, all right? It's called AC because it's alternating current and it will be delivered at a voltage of around 230 volts in the UK and in the USA it could be 110 or 220. And peak to peak or from the, from the start until the end is one cycle, okay? And 50 of these go into one second. That's why it's called 50 hertz. Similarly, your car alternator will produce AC as well. And incidentally, although it's not in the syllabus, we can make this into a rectified, it's called a rectified circuit, where we can flip this bit here the other way up. And then we use something called a smoothing circuit and we can end up with DC. But that's not in the syllabus, it's just interesting. Now, Sound, now you can hear 50 hertz sometimes if you've got a little buzzing sound on a, like an electric toothbrush or a little crappy thing you've plugged into the wall, you've got that, zzz, that that's 50 hertz or 60 hertz in America. But in general terms, we can hear from about 30 hertz, but you feel that, you know, it's like an elephant, uh, right up to about a young person, all the way up to maybe 18 kilohertz. But the syllabus tells us that between 30 hertz and 15,000 hertz, 15 kilohertz, which is if I hit one of my symbols, right at the top there, right at the top would be 15 kilo, it'd be higher, but that's what you can hear. However, for communications, like your average old fashioned telephone call would be between 300 hertz and 3000 hertz. What we say is 300 to three, if you remember, we've done this before, three kilohertz. And that would be a small K, a big H and a small Z. Three kilohertz, 300 to three kilohertz. And that's generally what the average phone call is. Now, RF, on the, other, on, the, on the other hand, is much higher in frequency in the main. All right, so amateur radio operators can operate, I think, from 135.7 kilohertz on all sorts of bands all the way up. In the main, if you buy your average ham radio HF set, you'll have 160 meters all the way up to six meters. 
What does that mean? Okay, so let's just take one of the bands and one of the frequencies. Let's take a radio that does 7.2 megahertz. And that'll be a big H there for hertz and a small Z. 7.2 megahertz. What does 7.2 megahertz mean? It means 7 million hertz. Actually, I've made a mistake. 7 million 200,000 hertz. 7.2 megahertz. All right. We can abbreviate 7 million 200,000 to 7.2 megahertz. Now, what does that actually mean? That means in the space of one second, okay, one second, this vibration, this frequency happens literally 7 million 200 times in one second. I mean, it's quite amazing, really, because RF travels at the speed of light, which in all intents and purposes is 300 million meters per second. If you want to know what a meter is, it's, it's about that big. <laughs> it's just over three feet if you're in America, but it's meters per second. That's the scientific 300 million meters per second, which is actually 300,000 kilometers a second, right? Because if you remember from meters to kilometers, we drop a thousand. Now then, if we've got seven, two, double, O, 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 and we've got three, O, 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 we can do some numbers. We can work out that if this thing is happening 7.2 million times in one second, and the speed of light is 300 million meters per second, all we have to do is drop off all the zeros here, all these zeros and say, right, what is the wavelength of 7.2 megahertz? Well, it's actually 300 divided by 7.2. Right, I just want to stop there. I'm in the edit because this 300 by 7.2, I realized that there's a bit of a mess on the maths and I didn't want to leave it un untold. So 300 million the speed of light is actually 299.99 something. And then we've got this 7 million, it's actually 7.2, but let's just call it 7 million so I can show you what I mean, that is a seven. The reason we can do 300 by seven, divided by seven is that we can cross these zeros out. All right, so 300 divided by, and it's not seven, it's 7.2, all right? That's all we need to do. And you can take any frequency and do the same calculation, 300 divided by any frequency. So if we fire up the calculator, so 300 divided by 7.2 megahertz is our wavelength, 41.66. So in other words, what does that actually mean? Well, it means if you had one second stretched out, it's, it's enormous, right? It's from one peak to peak, in other words, from there to there, the wavelength is 41.66 meters long. And that is happening 7,200,000 times a second. Okay, so there we are. So you get 7.2 million of these in one second. And that's why we can work out the wavelength. I'll give you another example. For instance, uh, 300 divided by the 80 meter band in the UK, I often say is about 3.75 on SSB. It happens to be exactly 80, 80 meter band. That's what we call it. What else does the book tell us? We've got different frequencies. We've got the RF here. We've got wavelength. It tells us, it seems when we all ask this in the exam, actually, let me get something that, not to mark anything here. Um, HF is three to 30 megahertz, 30 megahertz, generally called the 10 meter band. So it's, it's, that's, that's HF. That's what we call HF. Okay. And then from 30 to 300 megahertz, we call VHF, very high frequency. Above there is UHF, ultra high frequency. And then from 
um, 3 gigahertz onwards. Well, it's SHF, but around and about here, we actually start calling it microwave. Bit of added value there. Wavelength 300 divided by frequency. There we are. That's fine. And you get given in the exam. I didn't remember this chart anyway. So you'll be able to work it out. Now, my camera probably won't zoom into this, but it's a conversion chart. So you can look up any frequency and find out what the wavelength is. So there we are, but I'm pretty sure you get that. All right, next video we're going to do is analog to digital converter and digilog to, digi, digi to analog, digital to analog. That's quite interesting and extremely easy. Then we go on to transmitters, AM, FM, and all sorts of stuff. I'll put a link in the description to a bit of a fun video I did, the difference between AM, FM, and SSB. All right, so from me, Callum, in the bunker, I will see you next time. Interesting. I just find all these numbers fascinating. Have a good day now. Bye for now.